Welcome to Fear Guys Off Grid. Uh, we're back to plumbing again. We got Ben and myself, Levi, and Nick's on the camera. And uh, we've been playing around with our different bucket, like water filtration systems that just use gravel and sand. Uh, for down here, as you can see, we've got our IVC totes. And so this is our center greenhouse that's mainly for growing. But um, decided to put a washing machine in here. And so this is one of those like kind of college ones. It's pretty actually. You can um, only use it if you're college educated is what he's trying to yes. say. Yes. No, you can only <laughs> use it if you're in college. <laughs> <laughs> so, Associate's degrees don't. You only doctorates. No, you have to be attending college to use it. Oh. <laughs> You must Once be you're taking, out of college, you gotta sell it. You gotta go get your own. This is a college washing machine. <laughs> For college use only. Okay, continue. Okay. So, we, we did uh, hook it straight up to a pump and did some laundry with it right out of the rainwater, but it smells like stagnant rainwater collection. Yeah. And so, Ew. we don't need it sterile by any means, but we definitely don't want algae and stuff like that going into the, the water. So it's PVC pipe going in with some grooves in it, another PVC pipe over that with grooves cut into it, and then ceramic, rock, smaller rock, coarse sand, fine sand, and then the water just kind of sits right there. And so I've been playing around with a million different ways of how to have this here where the public that are coming through can actually use this and the, the limb, at first I was just filling it up that's only like half a gallon at a time that trickles through into this uh, collection and so then I put a bucket on top but I just poked a hole and, and then the hole in the bottom of the bucket it worked a couple times but it was just a tiny hole so that it would trickle but it would plug and so I came out one morning and it didn't even finish then I widened up the hole a bit, but then it was overflowing and then going right into the bucket, which actually would be fine if it was like off to the side. Wow, that really did a lot last night. <laughs> that one went faster. <laughs> and then I... Irrigation jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I had the idea of filling it up with a hole in the bottom, putting a lid on here sealed, a sealed lid on here. And so what I did, filled it up in like a igloo cooler I just flip it like that and it glug until it filled up and then it'd wait till the air lock, which was here, would come to give an air bubble. Oh, are these sealed? Yep. All the way? Yeah. yeah, with seals. And so that worked great. The problem is you'd have to pull this off to fill it every time. And then the average person that's helping out or whatever wouldn't know what to do. They do that and then water goes everywhere because there's actually big holes drilled in it now. And so that wasn't very good. And so. <laughs> So then I took another, I put another bulkhead in the lid, sealed it, did that, hooked it up, and... Oh, so you can control the, the, the flow. Yeah. Nice. That's what I thought. Yeah. Until I tried it. Oh, no! <laughs> and I hooked wah, it up, wah, but it just, launched, it just launched water down and out. <laughs> and so I was like, oh yeah, this is working because it's under, uh, it needs the, yeah, it's under a vacuum in here until the bubbles come up. So and this isn't free flying. Yeah. So, so that didn't work. In. In and so then as I was trying to like figure out how to redesign all this, it dawned on me I'm like, wait a second. So what I did was I hooked the garden hose up to here, held it and just filled it up like that, and then shut this valve off and then flipped it. And so I could leave the lid on. And it still has the vacuum because this is sealed now. But once it's empty, it's easy to just flip it over, fill it up turn the valve, flip it back over, and have it go through the sand filter. Beautiful. Yeah. And that would work if this cheap valve actually held air, so then I'd put a cap on it. <laughs> but again, uh, not going to be the final uh, yeah, we gotta, build. There will be a second rendition or 12. Because <laughs> you'd have to do this 11 times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now flip. <laughs> and wait an hour and a half and do it again. Uh, yeah, we can find a better way. Granted, this only takes like five gallons of water for a load. So, but as far as a hand washing station, uh, I thought about just hooking water up to this and just letting its natural crappiness leak water down in here at a slow rate. <laughs> Even with it off, it just drips uh, through. 
and so just let this be it. We should just pull it out right here. Is your blind? Yeah. And then yeah. Turn, open it up. And do this thing. Well, we've got the pressurized right here that we. And I got this beautiful guy. <laughs> so this guy hooks up to the washer. And it's the output, and this pump is a gallon per minute and it stops at 45 psi which is what a house is and so this gives constant pressure and we can split that off and go to a hand washing station or even do a uv filter and have it potable or even ro for that matter since it's 45 psi we can do a full blown five stage filter off that, of this because that does a gallon per hour to per, and then, per minute yeah and this is self priming as well so it doesn't matter if there's air and so then this is a, a little weighted uh screen that can drop down if it's perfectly in a 55 opening with a little float ball so I can have it off the bottom and that just sucks the water up to here, pumps it 45 psi to whatever devices we want to have. And so we can do non-potable there, we can have a, a potable filter to you know water we're going to drink so we're not running all the water through uh, UV or RO, whatever we decide to do. It just gives us a whole bunch of options. But up above, I'd like to do the, the full force stage with biochar and everything. That'll be... Like we said, phase yeah. one. This is a temporary rough filter. But this will get it down to about, I'd say about 20 to 50 parts per million of total dissolved solids. We want to get down to like two. Okay. So that's where the biochar and the fine sand and the multi-stage uh, comes into play. Also, this is going to plug up a lot faster than a four stage. Because the four stage, that, that rough, the big rock will catch a lot more. Right now, it's going directly onto the fine sand. And so it slows down a lot quicker. And it's not going to last as long. We're going to have to change this out every, you know, thousand gallons. Where some some of the big filters I've seen people put on whole houses have gone for like five years, wow. and they just skim off the top. Yeah, or just change the charcoal out every now and then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Make that the top layer. And so and this little guy's just a little twelve volt, and I'll hook it up to a car battery and a solar panel. But now for for somebody that's thinking about putting this in their house, this is obviously says twelve volt. So what would you recommend? Do you think? Um, that for like a this is the one I think transfer is transfer pump. Lawnmower battery maybe, eh? This one's four okay. amps. Yeah. So four amps time amps times volts is watts. So you've got forty-eight watts. Um, or a twelve volt four amp power supply is like external hard drives and computer routers and a mosquito on your eye. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, lo he loves me. <laughs> he loves me much. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> You're talking to me with a mosquito sitting here, uh, like dude. he just Man. smacked you in the eye. You got a mosquito on your eye. <laughs> it's like where is it? Oh, it's gone now. <laughs> I just wanted to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So this pump is uh, we got it at, like the farm store, farm supply store called uh, Feldman's, I think, and uh, they're like 25 bucks, 30 bucks on Amazon, something like that. And you can actually rig up uh, a 4 amp power supply when you get from like a, some higher end routers or hard drives are 12 volt 4 amp. Um, or you can find anything bigger than that uh, that's 12 volt, it'll work. You can just wire it up straight to it. How long would a normal car battery last with this? With this not being recharged, what, what, what would you say like the average like, life span of a normal battery okay. would be it for something like that? The beauty of this one is it stops at 45 psi and it has a built-in uh, one-way valve so unlike our other ones that we've had to plumb where they kick on then there has to be a one-way or the psi drops and it kicks back on yeah. even when it's not being used yeah. or like these ones right here they just run non-stop yeah. and they don't have, have a psi regulator at all um, this thing's just going to kick on until it's 45 right here and stop so it depends on how much water you use so that little charge, I mean, on a car battery, 12 volts at 4 amps, I've run my routers off of that, and it could go a month without any charge. But if you had, so again, 48 watts, um, your typical, like, you know, Harbor Freight cheapo 12 volt uh, solar panel is 25 watts. 
con uh, continuous throughout the day, and this is only using that when it kicks on. So if you just had one of those, not a that could be a super useful tool to pump yep. in all kinds of systems that we create. I mean, something that lasts that long on battery life. Out in the middle of the and, woods, and, campsites. Well, and, and then 40 plus PSI. Yeah. I mean, that, if you have like water efficient uh, fixtures in your house, I mean, yeah. the worst comes to worst, you can get some pressure from your house if you have to pump it in. Yes. Uh, a standard sink, a standard sink faucet that has an aerator, uh, the normal standard now is 1.5 gallons per minute. Um, if it's the, just a normal sink is 2 to 2.5. Five uh, gallons per minute, so it'd just be a little bit slower than a normal one. Uh, running on just this tiny little pump will run a, a normal spigot or shower head, a high efficient one. Well, we're gonna put this thing through its paces and see yeah. if, it, if it even keeps up. If, if so, I, I could see us using another build, another project. So. 2.0. Yeah. So when I did this with it right side up, when it's like that, it just sh shot, filled it up, shot out the sides, fell down in the barrel, <laughs> and the whole, the whole of it's contaminated. So you just turned that oh, on right there. it was just there. pressurizing the inside. <laughs> I went shooting out the bottom, and I'm like, uh, I mean, I, in two seconds I realized what I did wrong. And so I was like, I messed up. I need you to shut them up. <laughs> oh, fills up pretty quickly, actually. I'm in a precarious situation. Okay, now I'm going to take this off. And then the shut-off valve, which I shut off, doesn't actually hold. <laughs> so, yeah. so I have this cap. Upside down, righty tighty. Alright, here we go. You got water running down your leg! Yes! Just a... He peed his pants. Okay, so oh. now that's actually a big <laughs> So now that this is air, like sealed, you can see the holes on the top. Oh. And so I'm using that like a uh, igloo. So here's the sand. And I just cut a hole in the middle so that the bucket so that the bucket sits around here, the water comes up to the, the very tip here until, and water comes out until the air can suck in, and that's why it doesn't overflow. Wait, wait. All right, so yeah, just like a, a water cooler. It's going everywhere, I know that. Well, and this is empty, so it's fine. Look at that, it only lost 0.1 gallon. But see the water is sucking in right here? Now watch this, if I, So this, we can, you can, if you listen water, carefully, you can hear it dripping. So the air is lugging up through here because this was all air. So the water is coming in, the air is going up. A place for it to get air. And so then once this section fills up completely, here in just a, a little bit longer, yeah. and you can see the water is not coming out of the sides. And that's because we've got a seal up here which is creating a vacuum, a void of air. You can hear it. Yeah, it's up. going down. Now you're hearing the glugs less so. You can hear the uh, sucking in right there. This is sealing it. But if I open this, you'll see the water level right here. See it come out? And then I close it and it goes back down. That's why you have to have a, a lock up here. Yeah. An airlock. And so now this will just keep this completely full and trickle down. And so now five gallons or six probably, I can let this go and this will take probably uh, an hour to slowly get through the sand because it's really dense. And I made it really dense because I knew I was gonna do it in one bucket. But then it comes out pretty clean water. So, we got our car battery here. Actually, it's a lawn battery. Uh, that was only like 20 bucks up at the auto parts store. Got our pump. The filter's still going, and it's gone down a little bit. It's still holding good. Uh, got it hooked up to the washing machine here. It floats down in there. So this uses your standard like 12 volt plug that you'll see on like cheap uh, solar panels. But you got to be careful because. When you plug things into these, it's usually just a black cable and they all plug in together, but each plug reverses the polarity. So like if you get the female cigarette like car port and plug something in, I fried out like 110 volt inverters on camping trips. I fried out one of my lithium ion battery testers because I used a little 12 volt plug. And so I always use a voltmeter, but then after I got here, I realized the prongs are, are red and black, but that's 
the problem is if you do too many things, it doesn't end up right. And sure enough, if, like you can see here, this shows which one should be hot. This one shows which one's hot from that, and they're the opposite. So this is exactly why I would have plugged it in and tested the polarity before I hooked it up. But since I already know they're backwards, the red now needs to go to ground instead of black. Very annoying. I wish these would both be black and people would have to test them before they put them on. Or like once they do it, test these. Um, but we already know that it's reversed. Okay. Okay. We will digress. So now it's priming. It's self priming and we got quite a bit of hose. And it has a float and drops down. So we got it all primed up. It's sucking in from the filtered water that already went through the sand. 45 PSI hooked up to the washer. And so this we can choose whatever loads we want here. Start. The pump kicked on because the PSI just dropped. And now the water is coming out. And now we've got laundry. You can do laundry, you could have a sink, you could put an inline filter and have drinkable water coming right out of an open air pump. It was 30 bucks on Amazon, 25 at the store, and then just your car battery. And uh, we touched on this before, I'm gonna use a solar panel, but you could easily get a trickle charger for a car battery and just hook it up to it and plug it into the wall. If you want to do a really cheap version that's gonna last a long time. And then you also have, just have, you know, more 12 volt batteries and those are always great to, if the power goes out. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching us learn. Uh, thanks for learning with us. Uh, just a little recap. This is our rain collection that has been irrigated to our, our real basic water filtration system. This is our holding. This is gonna. This is the filter, and then is this is our actual main holding of purified water. We've hooked it up to a, a really small pump, one gallon per hour pump or per minute. I apologize and it's, it's just running right into here and then we're hooking it up to obviously like you like you see in the video to just an everyday normal appliance so you can also you know use it for hand washing stations really anything in the home so let your own creativity follow after the pump we want to give you guys clean water easy cheap and again guys we're talking 25 bucks for a pump that that puts for 45 pounds of PSI on. Pretty awesome. Let's see how it works out on, on the farm. But uh, like and subscribe if you guys really enjoyed this video. If you have questions, ask us, and then comment below because this is this is what we're about. We're just getting started, but this is awesome. And then uh, make sure you tune in for future videos because this kind of stuff will definitely be in those videos along with everything that's sustainable living as as much as we can learn. So uh, peace, guys. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and cut. Ooh.